Hello and welcome to today's presentation, Hardware-Based Fault Tolerance versus Software-Based Fault Tolerance. This is part one of a three-part series which is being brought to you by NEC Corporation of America. Joining us to discuss this topic today is Kevin Anthony Davis. He's a Senior Systems Engineering Manager with NEC. Now let me hand things over to Kevin to begin the presentation. Please go ahead. Thank you very much. What we're going to talk about today is hardware-based fault tolerance versus software-based fault tolerance. Simply affordable and scalable, and five nine to high availability out of the box for virtual server environments. We're all aware of the fact that no enterprise can afford downtime. From small and medium business all the way up to enterprise, this can be very, very costly. And the cost of downtime per hour spans across multiple verticals, from financial, media, transport, what have you. And the average cost of unplanned data center outages can exceed up to $42,000 an hour. And that equates to 87 hours per year per gardener. So not only are we talking about the financial impact, we're also talking about the impact in terms of the company's reputation. Um, we see things from Yahoo, Verizon, just as late Google also as well, where it also injures the company's reputation also as well. Hardware-based fault tolerance provides severe performance versus software-based approach. Hardware-based FT benefits over software-based FT is that we provide 2.4 times higher processing speed, zero downtime, and zero loss of performance during the recovery period. Principal Technologies has put forth an actual study that shows the test results here uh, that we're about to go through with hardware-based fault tolerance versus software-based fault tolerance, speaking specifically of VMware vSphere. From a technological comparison, when you're taking a look at the NEC FT 5800-320 with hardware-based fault tolerance, this includes two servers that operate as one, locked up with one another from the hard drives to the CPU. Everything is redundant. The two servers actually operate as one and present themselves all as one server to other machines. Thus, any virtual machine that's placed on the FT is automatically fault tolerant. When you put forth VMware's software-based fault tolerance on your normal 1U, 2U servers, you have to have both of those servers running primarily, one running primary and the other one running as a backup. If the primary host fails, the VM quickly and silently changes over to the backup host, preventing a data loss. When you take a look once again at the test results of the hardware-based FT versus software-based FT, also what you have to consider is performance. We provide 2.4 times the database performance from software-based fault tolerance. And it's not all about performance. Also, there's a host of other benefits that we're going to speak about very briefly as well. Setup time. So with the NEC FT320, you only need a one gigabyte switch to be fully fault tolerant. Um, other solutions you'll see require a 10 gigabyte network and dedicated external storage. So what we're talking about is a longer time in terms of setup and also added complexity. From a VMware standpoint, you have the ability to place more VMs on the Express 5800-320 also as well. We have the ability to support eight or more virtual machines with no additional time and effort. Versus the software-based FT, that requires more time and more effort. Furthermore, VMware does not recommend that it scales more than four virtual machines. There's also less hassle. We're talking about 36.6 .6 fewer steps and fewer required components also as well, um, from configuring of the VMs to adding the host to vCenter to installing ESXi. A lot less hassle, faster time to market, faster time to uptime. From a network traffic standpoint also as well, software-based fault tolerance has a tendency to saturate the network. This is because it continually requires backups of VMs between the hosts. And for such backups, once again, you must have a 10 gigabyte network infrastructure and dedicated ports are required on both those servers. Once again, causing network saturation. And it considerably limits the capability to scale as high as NEC's 5800-320 hardware-based FT. Also during a system failure, if there's any kind of failure, what type of performance should you expect? From the 5800-320 FT from NEC, you continue to run at full speed. Instant failover, and there's absolutely no deterioration in terms of the system performance. Even more important, it's absolutely transparent to your users 
that are accessing the system. So what does this boil down to? We're talking about the best platform solution for virtualization. Total cost of ownership savings, easy deployment, superior performance, and five nines availability with NEC's 5800 320 fault tolerant server. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks, Kevin. Well, I would like to thank today's speaker, Kevin Anthony Davis, for taking the time to join us today. And I'd also like to thank today's sponsor, NEC Corporation of America, for making this event possible. If you missed any of the webcasts in this three-part series, or you simply want to go back and watch them again, you can click on the links below in the console to view any of the webcasts in this series. As always, I'd like to thank you, the audience, for taking the time to join us today. Have a great day.